All right. So we are here today to talk about the Congressional Internship Program for summer 2023. Um, if you know people that applied for the Congressional Intern Fellows Program um, in like November for the summer internships, this um, application round and iteration is similar, but a little bit different. So it's not going to work exactly the same way. So if you know someone that had already applied, this process may be a little different. So definitely um, um, listen as we um, kind of go through that. So um, I want to introduce our staff here. Um, I am Mary Beth Woodward, and I work at the Center for Career Development and Academic Exploration, um, and I help oversee the Congressional Intern Program. And we are partners with the Howard Baker Jr. Center for Public Policy, and we have a couple of staff members um, also on the call. Do y'all want to introduce yourselves? I can go first. So my name is Lindsay Harrell, and I'm the Student Programs Coordinator here at the Baker Center. Um, and really kind of help with like working on the committee and things with Mary Beth to help make this possible. So. And my name is Erica Yuri. I am also a student programs coordinator at the Baker Center. Fairly new. This is, I think, going on week four. So I'm kind of just observing today and taking in all the information that you guys are taking in. Great. So we um, work together in partnership to um, make this program happen. So without further ado, we'll get, we'll sort of get into it. Um, and what you see on the screen are some former congressional interns, <laughs> a picture of them. All right. So why, why would you want, what do interns actually do? Some of you may um, have friends that have interned, so you may have heard sort of the inside scoop. Um, but interns are really kind of the front line for um, a congressional office. So they provide general office support to the staff. So anything that the office is going to ask you to do, um, an intern is there for those purposes. The interns also give tours of the Capitol. So constituents from that representative's district um, might call and say, we're going to be in D.C., we want to see the Capitol, and you then as an intern would be the one to give those tours. So you get to learn all about the history of the Capitol and, and provide that service to their constituents. You also do a lot of constituent communications uh, as an intern. So that might be uh, um, answering constituent emails, drafting letters, um, answering the phones and recording um, what constituents are saying. So there's a lot of constituent communications. Um, you may attend meetings and briefings on different topics and take notes for the office staff and then kind of um, consolidate those notes into kind of a one pager that the staff could then read and, and summarize. Um, if you are particularly interested in communications and um, press and PR, you may help with kind of that side of things in the office. Um, it really all depends on um, your interest. There are some typical intern roles that everyone kind of does. Um, and then, you know, if you have a particular interest, sometimes you can make that known to the office um, and they might be able to plug you in in other, other ways too. I will say that different offices use their interns in different ways too. So it can vary a little bit by from office to office, um, what the experience is like. But in general, this is kind of the typical intern um, experience. So why do you want to intern? You know, what, what is the benefit? There's lots of different benefits, no matter what you're looking for. 
obviously it's a great experience to add to your resume, really no matter what field you want to go into. Of course, if you want to go into politics or law, this is a great stepping stone to get there. Um, but it's also a great experience if you, uh, you know, see it fitting into the bigger picture um, in, in other fields. It's a great way to build contacts that can also help with future jobs, grad school admissions. You meet a lot of people when you're in DC. And so um, this is a great way to kind of build up your network. You really get to see the political process firsthand and how it actually works. So it's that translation of what you're learning in books, in your classes, to the actual kind of real world experience of this is what it actually looks like on a day to day basis. This is how policy actually gets passed. You can learn how people, how do people actually impact legislation? How does legislation get made? And, you know, how, how would someone um, actually impact that? And then, of course, adding that extra layer um, and context to what you're learning in class. So there's, there's lots of reasons why you might want to um, do a congressional internship, but these are just a couple of them. So let's actually talk about the program basics. Um, the website that you see here on the screen, it's kind of a long link, um, studentsuccess.utk.edu slash career slash students gain experience congressional intern program. It's on the Center for Career Development's website, basically, but that's the link to the congressional intern um, page. And um, Thank you, Lindsay. Lindsay put it in the chat box for anyone that wants to go straight to it because it is quite, um, quite the lengthy, um, quite the lengthy, lengthy link. So the internship scholarship program is is really jointly funded by our Division of Student Success, which the Career Center is housed in, the Baker Center for Public Policy, and the Institute of American Civics. So how does the program work? Um, students that are accepted into the Congressional Intern Scholarship Program will, you'll receive monetary support to help cover expenses while you're in DC. So some of these internships are paid, but some are unpaid. Many of them, if they're paid, they may not pay, you know, quite enough to cover your living expenses, for example, your apartment, um, your, transportation, what have you. So the scholarship is typically averages around $5,000. It is dependent on the length of internship um, and a few other kind of factors. So it is a range of money that you would be awarded, but the average is about $5,000. So how does this program actually then work? So you will secure an internship with a congressional office and then apply to UT's congressional intern program. Um, if as a congressional intern, a UT congressional intern uh, scholarship recipient, if you're selected, um, then the experience will include some pre-departure trainings and meetings with other interns to help prepare you for the DC experience. So you'll get to kind of meet other interns, um, learn kind of the basics of what you need to know before you go, um, network a little bit with some um, alumni and hear from previous interns about, you know, the ins and outs of the internship and what they sort of wish they would have known. So there's a little bit of kind of programming that comes along with the scholarship, um, typically in, in March and April. So here are the different steps in the process. For you all, the first step would be to actually apply to the internships with the Tennessee Congressional Offices in DC for the summer of 2023. Um, so this scholarship is only for Tennessee Congressional Offices. So it is not 
you would not be eligible if you were interning with a, um, you know, Florida congressperson, for example. So you would apply to intern with um, either a Tennessee um, representative or a Tennessee senator. Um, you can also apply any committee. Um, you can apply to committees, any committee that a Tennessee congressional representative actually serves on. Um, an internship with that committee would also be considered for the scholarship. So if you can find a list of representatives um, at, on congress.gov. So you would go to the um, website of the um, of the representative and um, apply to their internship program. So on the congressional internship website that Lindsay linked, our the um, Center for Career Development's congressional internship site, we actually do have direct links to the internship applications for each of these um, representatives. So you could you could do that also. So you would apply to the offices. The second step would be to submit your resume and a list of the offices that you're going to apply, that you've applied to, to me, uh, to Mary Beth Woodward at mbwoodward at utk.edu. Um, you can apply, of course, you can apply to multiple offices, of course, um, apply to more than one. That's certainly encouraged because that just ups your chances of um, securing a position. Um, so why do I need a copy of your resume or why do I want a copy of your resume? Well, sometimes offices will reach out to us and say, hey, we're really looking for an intern or we really need an intern. So it's helpful for me to know which students are actually in the process of seeking internships so I could then potentially share your, um, information with them, especially if they're one of the offices that you're in, that you're interested in. Um, if you have already secured an internship, let's say you've already applied to an office and you've been accepted already to an internship. That's great. That's wonderful. Um, you don't actually have to send me your resume then, um, but, but you will complete um, this next step, which I will show in a minute. So, you apply to the offices and submit your resume. If you want help with your resume, um, if you want interview coaching, um, help with this application process, then you can certainly make an appointment with the Center for Career Development and meet with your career coach to talk through all that. So we are happy and excited to help you through the application process if that's something that you would like a little bit of help with. And I'm sure that Lindsay um, and Erica in the Baker Center are also help, happy to help you with that process. So if you're already plugged into the Baker Center, you're already doing things with them and you want to just, um, you know, talk to them, that's also wonderful. So either way, um, we're all here um, to help you with that application process. So the next step, let's say that you, congratulations, you got an offer. So you have accepted an internship. If you secure an internship, then that's when the next step comes into play. You would be eligible to apply for the Congressional Intern Program Scholarship, and the application is on Handshake. So log into your Handshake account, and I would just, you search for a Congressional Intern Program Scholarship, summer 2023, um, when you log into Handshake. That's like the exact title. I copied and pasted it from Handshake. So Congressional Intern Program Scholarship, summer 2023. And that would pull up the application when you log into Handshake. It's not a super lengthy application. You would answer a few questions about yourself and your interest in the program and upload your resume. Um, so you would submit your information for that application in Handshake. So let me tell you a little bit about the deadline. The deadline is March 15th. Let's say that you um, are applying to internships and You've applied to a couple, but hey, it's March 14th and you haven't heard back yet. You haven't heard back yet. 
you can still apply for the Congressional Intern Program Scholarship. Um, you would just want to list and say, hey, I applied to um, Congressman XYZ and Representative XYZ. I just haven't heard anything back from them yet. Um, so you could still apply and be considered for the um, um, for the scholarship, but you would just need to apply by March 15th. That's the key. You want to still apply and get into our um, applicant pool by the 15th, even if you don't quite know where you are yet. Um, so that is the scholarship portion, um, applying on Handshake. So um, we, the Congressional Internship Committee would review the applications and make decisions based on your um, interest in the program, your commitment, and um, your um, your internship, basically. Some things to think about. If you do accept a spot in the Congressional Intern Program that you are committing to completing that summer internship with the Tennessee Congressperson or on the one of the committees. So it's important not to renege on any offer from the offices if you've accepted their offer and you've accepted the, the Congressional Intern Scholarship, then you're committed to completing that. If for some reason you're unable to complete the entire internship, say your internship is six or seven weeks and you have to leave for some reason, then you would have to pay a little bit of the scholarship back. Um, so that's just something to um, just something to make note of that you're committing to the program and um, the pre-departure workshops as a sort of something that coincides with the scholarship. Housing in DC, that's something that we have resources for and we can certainly share those and connect you with other interns um, and connect you with past interns. UT does not have a, a house in DC that everyone um, gets to stay at, unfortunately, but we have lots of resources um, to share with you related to finding housing in DC. Sometimes people are interested in taking classes while they intern, um, getting internship credit, that's all kind of a later on conversation that we could certainly have in conjunction with your academic advisor and just thinking about the pros and cons of that. Um, so those are a couple of other um, important steps and decisions to think about. All right, so I went through that pretty quickly. So you may have some questions. Um, feel free if you have questions to type them into the chat or um, unmute yourself. And we will uh, wait just a little bit. I have a question. Yes. Okay, so um, I know I'm in the summer internship lecture and all that stuff, but so I'm interested in the fall. And I was wondering if, is it like the same application I need to apply for the summer and then it will, and then I choose fall or is that like a whole different? Um, that's a that's a really good question. So right now we do not have a scholarship program running for the fall. So if you wanted to intern in the fall, um, you absolutely could. The app the applications for the offices are the same, but our scholarship program is currently not running in the fall. Okay, that's is it running in the spring? No, it's just in the summer right now. Oh, okay. Yes, it's just read, in the summer. Okay, because I read on the website, it says it's on the, it's fall. like, yeah. Yes, we've had it in the fall in the past. So there's a possibility that could come back, but it's not a guarantee. So I wouldn't, like, I couldn't bank on that necessarily. Okay, so you'd recommend just applying for the summer one I would recommend applying for the summer if you want to do want to do that yes mm -hmm. scholarship okay yeah thank you Richard you have your hand up <laughs> that I do so uh, I got into the zoom meeting late just because I just got out of class and I oh, had sure. a classmate that he was telling me that 
he was able to do the Knoxville office. Is it only the DC office at this time? So the congressional intern program is yes, only for the DC office. However, if you are interested in the Knoxville office, we have a different scholarship called the Impact Internship Grant, um, which is live in handshake also. And a district office, the Impact Internship Grant is very broad. It's for any internship that is unpaid or low stipend in nonprofit, government, um, education, like any of those fields. So the um, a local office would be eligible for that scholarship. And it's called the Impact Internship Grant and it's in handshake. Okay. But this uh, is only for DC. Okay, another question. Mm -hmm. So since I since I'm married and I'm do it, does that mean that I would need to leave my wife or would I have if she wanted to come, would I have to figure out like lodging for her? Like how exactly would that work? Um, that would totally be up to you. So like you if she wanted to come, she could come. Like there's nothing stopping her from doing that. You would just have to figure out a living situation that works for you both because the scholarship money is very much given to you and you decide what you need to do with it so how you need to use it best okay thank you i appreciate it yeah tucker you have your hand up hey yeah um so you mentioned earlier um <clears throat> that if you were underneath a committee assignment you could still get the stipend um if a member of like say blackburn or Haggerty was on that committee um that's true, correct? Yes. If one of the Tennessee, um, someone in the House or the Senate is on that committee from Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, follow up to that is in committees. Um, I know with uh, like staff in committees, there's like a Democratic staff and there's a Republican staff for each committee and they each have like, you know, their own things going for them do we need to be in the same political party as that member or is that not a rule is that a gray area it's kind of a gray area so I would say it's it's kind of fine either way as long as someone is on that committee yeah okay thank you I, I had a I had a question as well uh, on one of the links. Yes. The language. Sorry, uh, was that did I cut in front of someone? No, go ahead. Okay. One one of the links made it sound as if um, it says directly applicant must be a degree seeking undergraduate, and then in another link it says uh, May twenty twenty three graduates uh, qualify as well. So. Do both yes. of those language? <laughs> Sorry. Language? Yeah, I guess it meant like, yes. So uh, if you're graduating in May 2023 and you want to intern in the summer, you would qualify. Okay, that's excellent. I just wanted to know if they were saying the same thing. They Yes. Sorry, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Any other questions? I will say definitely as definitely if you're thinking about applying, apply sooner rather than later. Um, so I would definitely get on that. Um, applying specifically to the offices and then um, sending me your resume. Um, so I know that you're applying is also um, to the offices or um, where you've been applying is important. So, and I am going to um, put our put this recording on our um, website, and my email address is also on there. So, if you have questions, you can definitely um, contact us. You can talk to Lindsay and Erica also about the program um, if you work um, with the Baker Center a lot. So, definitely reach out if you have questions. Wait, excuse me. I have a quick question. Sure. Sorry. Um, I was just glancing around on the website and mm -hmm. I saw. Um, 
I saw where to apply for the uh, specific offices. Where do mm -hmm. I find um, the committees? Um, the committee. I saw like a link to it, but I didn't see like a direct like application link, so to speak. Yeah, the committees all run a little bit differently. So you would want to look and see the committees that you're like the different representatives are on and then um, kind of like search for those and see if there's a direct internship application on those. Okay, thank you. And I, I will say just as a word of warning, the committees are typically a little bit harder, um, just a little bit more challenging to secure an internship place. Um, that's not to discourage you from applying or trying that, um, but um, that's just kind of a, a word of warning. Um, typically, they're a little bit more challenging. All right. Well, that's all the questions we have. Um, thank you all for being here today. And um, I am going to stop our recording. Um,